From New York City, the makers of Clipper Craft Clothes for Men and 1036 leading retail stores from coast to coast present the world's most famous detective, Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> this week's story, The Adventure of the Illustrious Client. Well, here we are again in Dr. Watson's famous study. He has just given us a tall frosted glass that clinks pleasantly and is now rearranging his notes and papers. Uh, there now, Mr. Harris, we're all set, as you say, in America. <laughs> Good. Then let's get on with it, as you say in England, Doctor. <laughs> yes. But tonight I think I'll tell you how Holmes disillusioned a charming young lady and consequently saved her from what is commonly called a fate worse than death. Mm, oh, yes, yes, but before we begin to get too involved in that rather complicated affair. Mr. Harris, you'd better say a few words on a subject that's very appropriate at this particular season of the year. A very good idea, Dr. Watson. Here's a fact you ought to know. There's no reason in the world for you to pay high prices for a beautifully tailored, smartly styled suit of clothes. Not with Clippercraft available. Clippercraft clothes feature long-wearing fabrics, are superbly made and better than fairly priced, despite rising costs of materials and manufacturing. There's a big reason Clippercraft clothes are priced so modestly. It's the famous Clippercraft plan, concentrating the buying power of 1036 of the nation's finest stores from coast to coast, providing steady year-round operation, lowering manufacturing and distribution costs. It makes available the finest suits you've ever seen for only 40 to 4750. Handsome tropicals at 3375 to 40 dollars and sport jackets at only 2650. Naturally, more fine stores than ever are welcoming the Clippercraft plan. These are the days it really goes to work for you. Compare Clippercraft with clothes selling for many dollars more. And now, back to the young lady who was about to be rescued by Mr. Sherlock Holmes, no less. Right. It was uh, September the 3rd, 1903. A few years after my marriage, if you remember. Hmm. Well, I dropped around to Baker Street in the middle of the afternoon. There was Holmes lying on the sofa, pipe in hand, a piece of letter paper dangling from his long, lean fingers. But the thing that surprised me most was the appearance of the room itself. Hello, I say, Holmes, what's up? Have we reached the millennium? What do you mean? Well, I'm alluding to the unprecedented tidiness of the room. Oh, that. It's Mrs. Hudson's doing. Oh. She's got wind of the fact that I'm expecting a call from Sir James Damery this afternoon, and she took a mean advantage of my being out of the house this morning to commit this, this atrocity. Oh, not a bad idea, either. I won't be able to find anything for weeks. And, and my hair, look at it. Oh, don't tell me Mrs. Hudson made you brush it. Women are tyrants, Watson. Tyrants. Oh, rubbish. I say, what's all this about uh, Sir James Damery? What, what does he want? Beyond this charming note which says he'll be here at 4.30 and that the matter is extremely delicate and important, I know about as much about the matter as you do, which is absolutely nothing. Well, I'm glad to hear you admit it. I say, look here, Holmes, uh, isn't this chap Damery a pretty important person in the diplomatic service? Quite. Oh. Hello. Isn't that a carriage I hear drawing up in front of our house? Oh, by Joe, sir. Oh, it's a handsome turnout, Holmes. Two men on the box. Yes, I don't imagine that carriage belongs to Sir James himself. He must be acting for someone else. By Jove, the crest on the door. Aha, uh -huh, so it's as serious as that. I say, Holmes, you've got deuced good eyesight. I can't make out the crest at all. That's just as well, my dear Watson. Just as well. Ah, here comes Damity himself. Oh, I say, he is a handsome fellow, eh? Yes, a splendid fellow. Honest and understanding and, and clever used clever, my dear Watson. Oh, I suppose you say that because he had the intelligence to come to you instead of going to Scotland Yard. Oh, rubbish. <laughs> oh, look at Mrs. Hudson opening the door to him. All starched up, her face as red as a beet. Yes, she'll talk about this for weeks. Dear, dear women, she'll go into raptures over the color of his eyes, the, the fit of his coat, the... Come in, come in. It's Sir James Damery to see you, sir. Well, ask him to come in. Yes, sir. Just be so good as to step this way, your lordship. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Uh, don't forget to close the door, Mrs. Hudson. Uh, oh, no, sir. <laughs> You've created quite a little flutter in our household, Sir James, as you can see. <laughs> it's so good of you to see me, Mr. Holmes, and 
Oh, this I take it is Dr. Watson. I hope to find you here. Delighted to make your acquaintance, my dear doctor. Well, the pleasure's mine, I'm sure. Well, won't you sit down, sir? Thank you. Dr. Watson's collaboration may be vital, Mr. Holmes, for we are dealing on this occasion with a, a violent and ruthless man. I may safely say there is no more dangerous man in Europe. I have outwitted several opponents to whom that flattering term has been applied. Uh, who is this uh, paragon, Sir James? Have you ever heard of Baron Gruner? The Austrian murderer. So, you have already sized him up as a murderer. It's my business to follow the details of continental crime. I'm as sure that he killed his wife at the time of the so-called accident at Flugen Pass as if I'd seen him do it. Yes. I knew also that he'd come to England and was convinced that sooner or later he'd find some uh, work to do. Then you sympathize with the client at whose interest I'm acting. Yes. And I uh, guessed you were only an intermediary. Who's the principal? Mr. Holmes, I must beg you not to press that question. It is important that his honored name should not be dragged into the matter. I am accustomed to have mystery at one end of my cases, Sir James, but not at both. I fear I must decline. Uh, may I at least lay the facts of the case before you? By all means. You uh, have no doubt heard of General de Merville. Oh, de Merville? The Iron General of Khyber fame, the old bulldog? Why, I remember the great day of... Watson, that... Watson, don't interrupt. Oh, oh, very well. Well, the old bulldog has a daughter, Violet de Merville. Young, rich, and beautiful. It is this daughter, this lovely, innocent girl, whom we are endeavouring to save from that fiend, Gruner. He has some hold over her? She's in love with him, Mr. Holmes. At least she thinks she has a mad infatuation. She... Oh, she's obsessed by the man and proposes to marry him next month. Oh, there's very little her family can do as she is of age and has a will of iron. Oh, her father's daughter, eh? Watson. Oh, sorry. Does she know about the Austrian episode? The rascal has told her every unsavory public scandal of his past life. Mm, foolhardy, eh, Holmes? But always in such a way as to make himself out to be an innocent martyr. Mm, cunning devil. But surely, Sir James, you've let out the name of your client. It must be General de Merville. I could deceive you, Mr. Holmes, by saying so. My dear Damery, it takes more than that to deceive me. <laughs> yes, yes, I suppose so. Let us say, then, that my client is an old friend who has known the general intimately for years and has taken a paternal interest in the girl since she wore short frocks. It, it was his suggestion that you should be called in. Hmm, very flattering. Your problem interests me, Sir James. I'm prepared to look into it. Excellent. In case of developments, you can reach me at the Carlton Club. And the Baron's address? Vernon Lodge near Kingston. Mm -hmm. It's a large house. He has been fortunate in some shady speculations and is a rich man, worse luck. Yes, that makes him all the more dangerous as an antagonist. Can you give me any further information about him? His, his personal habits, I mean? He has expensive tastes. A horse fancier, plays polo, collects books, women. And is a recognized authority on Chinese pottery. Has even written a book on the subject. Hmm, Chinese pottery. A complex mind like most great criminals. Well, Sir James, you will inform your client that I am undertaking the case of the Baron Grunard. I am exceedingly grateful, Mr. Holmes. Not at all. Well, uh, good luck, gentlemen, and uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Oh, dear me, this is a delicate situation, eh? Well, Watson, any news? Well, I should think you'd better see the young lady herself. De Merville's daughter? No, no, no. That's more or less of a last resort. No young woman in love is ever very reasonable. And Violet has her father's determination in all probability. No, first of all, I think I shall consult Shinwell Johnson. Shinwell Johnson? Hmm. Who's he? Well, suppose we meet for lunch tomorrow at Simpson's. I'll ask him to drop around with any information he's been able to pick up. Don't disappoint me, Watson. Oh, no, no. I think I may be able to introduce you to a colorful personality. Oh, I'll be there, never fear. Another glass of claret, waiter. Yes, sir. Well, Watson, Johnson's on the prowl. He may pick up some garbage in the dark recesses of the underworld. But it's down there that we must look for Baron Gruner's secrets. Yes, but who's this Shimble Johnson fellow? An ex-convict whom I've succeeded in reforming. Served two terms at Parkhurst. Oh. Consequently, he has the entree to every nightclub, doss house and gambling den in town. An ideal agent for gaining information, Watson. Yes, but if Miss Violet's not affected by what she already knows, why should any discovery of Mr. Johnson's change her mind? Who knows, Watson? Woman's heart and mind are insoluble puzzles to the male. Murder might be condoned or explained, and yet some smaller offence might rankle. As Baron Gruner remarked this morning, you can't... So you've seen him? Well, to be sure, didn't I tell you? No. Oh, dear me, how careless of me. I always like to meet my adversary eye to eye and find out for myself the stuff that he's made of. But didn't he recognize you? Naturally, I sent in my card. Oh, you are a character, Holmes. An excellent antagonist, this Baron Gruner. A real aristocrat of crime. Cool as ice and as poisonous as a cobra. Mm -hmm.
I rather thought I should see you sooner or later, Mr. Holmes. I understand you have been engaged to prevent my marriage to the daughter of General de Merville. Quite, Baron Gruner. My dear fellow, you will only ruin your famous reputation. Let me advise you to draw off at once. <laughs> dear me, that was the very advice I was about to give you. If you persist in this marriage, you'll raise a swarm of powerful enemies. Is the game worth it? Surely you'll be wiser if you let the lady alone. You can hardly wish certain facts about your past to be brought to her notice. <laughs> oh, pardon my amusement, Mr. Holmes. But it's most amusing to see you trying to play a hand with no cards in it. So? You think I hold no cards, my dear Baron? Let me assure you I have several aces up my sleeve. Bluff, Mr. Holmes. Perhaps you don't realize that I hold the affection of this lady in spite of all the uh, unhappy incidents of my past. I've also told her that certain wicked and designing persons, I hope you recognize yourself, would come to her and try to poison her mind against me. I also told her how to treat them. You've heard of post-hypnotic suggestion? If you call on Violet, you'll have an opportunity to see how it works. Uh, <laughs> dear little Violet, such a delightful subject for hypnotism. A hypnotic spell can be broken, my friend. Only by a stronger personality. Oh, by the way, Mr. Holmes, did you know Lebrun, the French agent? I did. Do you know what happened to him? Yes, he was beaten and crippled for life. Quite true. Mr. Holmes, by a curious coincidence, he had been inquiring into my affairs only a week before. Don't do it, Mr. Holmes. It's not, uh, lucky. Nasty brute. I say, Holmes, you better watch yourself. He'll stop at nothing. Quite. Two attempts have already been made on my life, Watson. I always disregard the blusterer, but this is the sort of chap who says rather less than he means. Oh, but look, here comes Shinwell Johnson. Huh? The red-faced fellow with the beefy jowls and the tremendous gold watch chain. But I say, who's his companion? The young woman, I mean, with a pale, intense look. She she looks as if she'd lived a bit, Holmes. Yes, a dark page from Baron Gruner's past, I imagine. Ah, good afternoon, Shinwell. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Holmes. Uh, waiter, bring an extra chair for the lady. Yes. That's better. Uh, this here is Miss Kitty Winter. Oh, how do you do? What she don't know about the Baron, but she'll speak for herself. I found her within an hour after I heard from you. Quick work, eh, Mr. Holmes? I'm easy to find. The gutter London gets me every time. Same address for Porky Shinwell, but by cripes, Gruner ought to Yes, be... yes, yes, then I gather we have your good wishes, Miss Winter. Look at me. What I am, Albert Gruner made me. If I can help put him where he belongs, I'm yours to the death rattle. You know how the matter stands? He's after some other poor fool. Wants her to marry him this time, eh? Don't you know enough about him to keep any decent girl in her senses from... She's not in her senses. She's in love. She knows pretty much all about it. She knows about the murder? Yes. Good Lord, she must have a nerve. She puts it all down to slander. We want proofs. Can you help us? Proofs? I think I'm proof enough. Let her take a look at me and listen to what I can tell her. Would you be willing to do it? Wouldn't I, though? Remember, he's told her most of his past. I'll wager he didn't tell her all. I'll bet she don't know he's got a book, a brown leather book with a lock. He must have been drunk that night or he wouldn't have showed it to me. What kind of a book? That devil collects women, Mr. Holmes, like some men collect butterflies. And he's proud of his collection. He's got it all in that book. Snapshot photographs, names, details, everything. If you could only lay hands on that book... Probably got her in there with the rest of us by this time. She'd like that, wouldn't she? Where is this book? Well, it's more than a year since I was in his study. I knew where it was kept then. Do you know his house? I've been in his study. I'll hand it to you for being on the job. Maybe he's met his match this time. Well, the outer study is where he keeps his Chinese crockery. A big glass cupboard between the windows. Then behind his desk is a door that leads to the inner study. It's in there that he keeps his papers and things. Well, isn't he afraid of burglars? Say what you like, he's no coward. He can look after himself. Besides, there's a burglar alarm at night. I see. If we could get into that study, Miss Winter, 
You think you could show us where that book's hidden? Sure. Oh, but look here, Holmes. You can't go breaking into a strange house. It's against the law. Quite, and I wouldn't dream of doing it, except as a last resort. But come along, Miss Winter. We'll see how far our legal efforts get us before we turn to other tactics. What do you mean? Suppose we just drop in on Mr. Merville for a little chat. <laughs> What a pretty drawing room. It's been a long time since I... You won't believe it, Mr. Holmes, when I tell you I once had a nice home, too. Obviously, my dear, I can tell by your hands you were a lady. The rough talk you assumed to cover it up didn't fool me for a minute. Oh, sir, I'm so nervous. I don't know if I can go through with it. Courage, Kitty. It'll be over in a minute. Quiet, someone's coming. Ah, Mr. Merville, if I'm not mistaken. Mr. Holmes, I presume. Quite. Pray be seated. I've been expecting a visit from you. You have called, as I understand, to malign my fiancé, Baron Gruner. It's only fair to warn you, Mr. Holmes, that you're wasting your time. Nothing you can say will have the slightest effect on my mind. My dear young woman, I wonder if you realize what it means to be married to a murderer. And worse, his reputation will bar you from decent society in any civilized country. How can a woman of your upbringing consent Mr. to... Mr. Holmes, I'm aware that my fiancé has had a stormy life in which he has incurred bitter hatreds. You are only the last of a series to slander him. Don't think that I don't know your motive. You're a paid agent who would have been equally willing to act for the Baron if he'd consented to pay your price, but he refused. Oh, really, Mr. Merville? Moreover, Mr. Holmes, I am not clear why you should bring this, this person into my drawing room. I, I haven't the slightest notion who she is. No? Well, I'll tell you who I am. I'm his last victim. He'll kill you, that's what he'll do. It may be a broken back or a broken heart, but he'll break you one way or the other. I don't need your protection, thank you. Oh, it's not for love of you I'm speaking. I don't give a tinker's curse if you live or die. It's because I hate him, do you hear? And you needn't look at me like that. God knows you may be lower than I am before you're through. Let me say once for all that I'm aware of three passages in my fiancé's life when he became entangled with designing women. Three passages? Three passages, she says. Oh, you fool. You fool. Wait till you see that book. Compare Clippercraft with suits, tropicals, and sport jackets, selling for many dollars more. It's a wonderful way to prove to yourself how much you save with Clippercraft. The fine local independent stores who sell Clippercraft clothes from coast to coast make a business of giving you more for your money. Your favorite store, the store you can trust, is back of the remarkable Clippercraft plan. The plan that concentrates the buying power of 1036 of the nation's finest stores from coast to coast. And that's why you can buy luxurious long wearing fabrics in Clippercraft suits for only 40 to 47.50. Fine tropicals at $33.75 to $40, and sport jackets for only $26.50. Ask any of the millions of men who wear Clippercraft clothes. For selling expensive clothes at inexpensive low prices at the nation's finest stores is the great big idea behind the Clippercraft plan. That's why men who know insist on Clippercraft clothes. So be sure to visit the Clippercraft store in your city. These leading stores in the metropolitan area are proud to add their names to Clippercraft in your suits, top coats, sport jackets, and tropicals. In Manhattan, John Wanamaker Men's Stores, Broadway at 8th and 67 Liberty Street, Saks 34th, Broadway at 34th. In Brooklyn, Abraham and Strauss. In Newark, New Jersey, Boulevard Men's Shop, Kresge, Newark. And in Jamaica, the B&B &B Clothes Shop, 16408 Jamaica Avenue. Now to return to our adventure, in front of Sherlock Holmes' lodgings at 221B Baker Street, we find an excited crowd of people. I say, uh, have you heard the news, she? Uh, this is where he lives, the poor man, oh, the poor man. Look at the papers, a murderous attack on Sherlock Holmes. They've murdered him? Do you hear that? They've murdered him. It's an outrage. A man's not safe in the streets anymore. But how did it happen? Two ruffians outside the Cafe Regal, they, they, they beat him with sticks. He, he was picked up for dead. Oh, he's dead. Isn't that dreadful? Sherlock Holmes is dead. Yeah, let me through. Let me through. I say, I'm a doctor. Oh, he's a doctor. Uh, let him through. Please, he's a doctor. Oh, confounded. The bell won't ring. 
Watch it. Oh. oh, here you are at last, Dr. Watson. Praise be. Come in, come yeah, in. Yes, I, I've been out all afternoon, Mrs. Hudson. I've just got word. Is he badly hurt? Oh, sir, they brought him in here all bleeding. They had to have that surgeon fella, Oakshot. Oh, Sir Leslie Oakshot? Oh, then it is serious. Yes, sir. He's been taking stitches in him and giving him morphine. Well, do you think I can go up for a moment? Well, that Sir What's-His-Name said as Mr. Holmes was to have absolute quiet. I had to stuff the doorbell on account of the newspaper fellows. Oh, yes, sir, quite right. Uh, but Mr. Holmes kept saying he had to see as soon as you came. So that surgeon fellow said, all right, but only for ten minutes, mind. Oh, good, I'll go right up. Yes, sir, and let me know if he's wanting anything. Oh, this is terrible, terrible. It's all the Baron's doing, of course. Wait till I lay my you hands on that. Walk on tiptoe, Watson. It's not as bad as it seems. Oh, thank God for that. Of course, it's that rascal who set them on. I'll go and thrash the hide off him, if you say so. <laughs> I... Good old Watson. No, it's not necessary. But there is something you can do for me. Anything, anything at all. We haven't much time. I've just discovered that the Baron is planning to elope to South America with Mr. Merville day after tomorrow. Must be losing his nerve. Well, what can we do in that short time? You are to spend the next 24 hours in an intensive study of Chinese pottery. Me? Chinese pottery? Holmes, you're delirious. Not at all. Hand me that little box from the mantelpiece. Which way? Uh, uh, this one? Yes, that's right. Uh, uh, only open it for me, will you, Watson? These right clumsy right. bandages. I don't want to run any risk of breaking it. Oh, I see. It's a beautiful little deep blue saucer wrapped in silk. That is the real eggshell pottery of the Ming dynasty. A complete set of it would be worth a king's ransom. The Baron would sell his soul for a set like that. Well, what am I to do with it? Here is your card. Oh, yes, but this says Dr. Hill Barton, 369 Half Moon Street. That I... is your name for tomorrow evening. You will call on Baron Gruner at half past eight. Would I... The note's already been set making the appointment and saying that you're bringing a specimen of an absolutely unique set of Ming china. You may as well be a medical man, since you can play that part without duplicity. Don't want to put too much of a strain on your acting ability. No, no, look here, Holmes, Watson, I you're can't... not going to go back on me at a time like this. Well, no, 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 of course not, but I say, what if he won't see me? He'll see you right enough. He has the collector's mania in its most acute form. The important thing is to cram up on Chinese pottery so you can carry on an intelligent conversation. Well, I'll, I'll do my best. Good. Half past eight tomorrow. right -o. Now, perhaps you'd better go, I... I'm afraid I feel a trifle weak. I'll find out if the Baron will see you, sir. Uh, I, I believe he's expecting me. Very good, sir. Dear me, dear me, I wish my knees had stopped wobbling about. Hung Wu and uh, uh, Young Lo. The writings of Tang Ying, the... Primitive periods of Sung and Yuan. Oh, dear, dear me, this is dreadful. I... This way, the Baron is in his study. The Chinese room, we call it. Dr. Barton, sir. Oh, pray sit down, Doctor. Pray sit down. Oh, thank you. I was just looking over my treasures. Have you ever seen a richer glaze than this little tongue specimen there? Eh? Oh, delightful. Delightful. Yes. Oh, have you the Ming saucer with you? Oh, yes, yes, indeed. I, I thought you might want to see it. Here it is. Let me unwrap it for you. Uh, there we are. Oh, fine. Very fine indeed. And you say you have a set of six to correspond? No, oh, yes. I only know of one in England to match this, and it is certainly not on the market. Would it be indiscreet, Dr. Barton, to ask how you obtained this? Well, does it really matter? You can see the piece is genuine. Oh, undoubtedly. But suppose I should discover later that you had no right to sell. Oh, I'd guarantee you against any claim of that sort. And what is your guarantee worth? My bankers would answer that. Yet on the whole, this business is very mysterious. Well, you can do business or not as you like. I've given you the first offer because I understood you were a connoisseur. Who told you so? Well, you, you, you wrote a book on the subject, I believe. Have you read the book? I, no. You are a collector with a valuable piece in your collection... And yet you have never troubled to consult the one book which would give you the real meaning and value of what you hold. Now, how do you explain that? I'm a very busy man, a doctor in practice. That's no answer. You said in your note you were a connoisseur. So I am. Well, what do you know of the Emperor Shomu? How do you associate him with the Shoso Inn near Nara? Well, 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 well as a matter of Does fact... Does that puzzle you? What about the northern 
Wei Dynasty. Oh, this is intolerable. I came here to do you a favor, not to be examined as if I were a schoolboy. You're here as a spy. Sherlock Holmes sent you. Now, what's the game? You've made your way in here without leave. But you're not going to find it so easy to get out again. I thought the beating he got yesterday would be enough to scare him off. But if he wants a corpse to prove to him... Uh, uh, oh, what's that? Uh, someone's in the inner study. Someone... Uh, huh. Sherlock Holmes himself. Now, what are Blazes you doing here? Just glancing through your diary. Rather lurid reading, my dear fellow. I wonder what Miss Violet will think of it. Put that book down. Put it down, I say, you fool. Uh, my men bungled. I told them to kill you. Well, I'm going to complete the job myself. Look out, Holmes, he's got a knife. Oh, no, you don't. I've got a little score of my own to settle. Oh, Kitty, what are you doing here? Surprised to see me, eh? Thought I'd killed myself by this time. Well, I'm going to fix you. Oh, now, really, Kitty. You're most amusing. Go ahead and laugh. <laughs> It'll be the last time. <laughs> Very well, then. Take stop her, stop her, Watson. Oh, oh, could I do Watson, oh, why didn't you stop her? She's oh, blinded me. Oh, vitriol, it's burning my eyes out. Oh, water, for God's sake, water. That'll spoil oh, your looks. The pain, I can't stand the pain. It's driving me crazy. No, laugh. <laughs> Why don't you laugh? <laughs> what a story, Doctor. And did Mr. Merville break off the engagement when she saw the Baron's love diary? Oh, dear me, yes. Sir James came and collected it and the little saucer of Ming China the afternoon after her encounter with Gruner. The diary was in the Baron's own handwriting. There was no way of getting around that. The wages of sin, my dear Mr. Harris. The wages of sin. Be sure your faults will find you out. <laughs> uh, say, Doctor, uh, apropos of nothing at all, was Mr. Holmes arrested for housebreaking? Now, what an idea. Well, there was some rumor about a prosecution, I believe, but when the purpose is good and the client sufficiently illustrious, even the rigid British law becomes human and elastic. Holmes is yet to stand in the dock. Uh, and the illustrious client, Doctor, did you ever find out who he was? Well, I could make a good guess. On Sir James' second visit, I escorted him down to his carriage, and quite by accident, mind, I, I caught a glimpse of that coat of arms before Sir James threw his overcoat half out of the window to cover it. And who was it, Doctor? Oh, I couldn't dream of telling. Beyond the fact that uh, he was a loyal friend and a chivalrous gentleman and his... Coat of arms had three ostrich plumes on the top. And, of course, you haven't the remotest idea. Oh, certainly not. Mm. Uh, and now, Doctor, how about giving our friends and listeners a hint about next week's story? Next week? Now, let me see. Oh, yes, next week, I think, I, I think I'll think i tell you about some yellow roses that refused to die and how they nearly caused the death of a lovely young second wife who heard the voice of her husband's first wife calling to her from a watery grave. <laughs> The makers of Clipper Craft Clothes and 1036, leading stores from coast to coast, have brought you another in the new series of broadcasts featuring the world's most famous detective, Sherlock Holmes. Our stories are based upon the character Sherlock Holmes, created by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Sherlock Holmes is played by John Stanley, Dr. Watson by Alfred Shirley, and the dramatizations are by Edith Miser. Sherlock Holmes is produced and directed by Basil Ockren, with special music by Albert Berman. If you don't know your Clippercraft dealer, write Clippercraft, 200 Fifth Avenue, New York City. Be sure to listen next week to Sherlock Holmes in The Case of the Ever Blooming Roses. <laughs> This is Cy Harris speaking for Clippercraft Clothes. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs>